Hi, I'm Dr Kim Trogel and um, this is a video um, for MA Architecture and MA Interior Design students and it's really an online tutorial for the Critical Context Unit um, looking at the literature review and looking through some good examples of that around in relation to the assessment criteria. Um, so joining Kim uh, is Dr Anna Wakeford Holder and I'm going to be pointing out some of the things that um, I think have been particularly successful or that you might want to pay attention to in examples from previous students work. I'm Steve Dixon-Smith, I'm a learning development tutor and um, I'm not a subject specialist in architecture so I'll be asking questions that help me make sense of what, um, what, what the assessment needs are for, for architecture students. And my name's Ian Badger. I'm a learning and teaching librarian. So I'll be looking at the sources that the student has used to, to write their literature review and also pick up some issues to do with the referencing. So we're just going to start by taking a look at the assessment criteria for the context and method unit. In order to find this, if you go to your course area on my UCA and click on the course handbook um, option, On there, you'll find a link to the uh, unit descriptors. So once you open that, you can browse down to see the assessment criteria for each unit. And these are the criteria for the context and method units. Yeah, and the purpose of drawing attention to these really is to help you think about um, what it is that um, this assignment is kind of asking you to do in terms of the sort of things that we're, we're wanting you to learn and then how it's going to be assessed. Um, and we'll just pick out a few things um, from each category to help you um, sort of make sense of how that might relate to the literature review task. Yeah, so the first one is really, it's called conceptual skills. And what this is really sort of interested in is how well you're kind of engaging with theoretical uh, discourse. So it's, are you, yeah, are you engaging with kind of theories? That means much more kind of bigger, wider ideas than just sort of something that's quite descriptive. So um, this is really about you also being in, able to interrogate the theory in the context of your own um, research as well. So it's about make, not just repeating things, but making sense of them for yourself. Yeah, so in relation to the literature review, what you might want to do is maybe pull out some of the kind of big ideas, um, the, the kind of ideas in the text that you're reading. What are some of the terminology that the authors are using? What definitions do they do? Do they give for that? Um, and also then question those in terms of how they might apply to your area of design practice, for example, or to other kind of wider questions you're engaging with. Would it be fair to say then that with, with the with the concepts and the theories that that you're in this for for this aspect of it you're less interested in the actual examples that texts might talk about than the than the ideas that those examples are used to illustrate? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So with some of the some of the texts that we set for the seminars, for example, they will be talking about practices. Um, they'll be talking about design examples, but they'll usually be using those to illustrate kind of ideas or um, concepts or relationships or beliefs and, and it's those that we, we're keen for you to engage with. Right. I mean the, the second thing we'd like to draw your attention to is, is this um, second criteria of research skills. So what we're kind of looking for there is really um, kind of seeing that you're getting to know your subject um, and really also becoming an expert in it in a way um, by doing some good research and by this we kind of mean um, not just sort of browsing for things on, on the web or just sort of kind of finding things on Wikipedia, but it's really about proper kind of academic research. And so by this, it means kind of using a range of different sources. So this might mean um, different kind of books, um, academic journals, professional journals, as well as um, potentially relevant policies that might be related to your topic as well. And we can have a look at some examples of those. So it's really about um, kind of engaging with, with a kind of high level, very precise kind of text, and then evaluating those, bringing the evidence from those to compare different texts and as well as kind of start to kind of articulate your own position. So it's, you, it's about your research skills, about finding this material, but then also evaluating it and telling us what you make of them. Yeah, in terms of the, uh, the idea of the critical evaluation, um, you might want to think about where, uh, where the sort of um, 
sources that you're looking at, where are they being published? So, for example, something that's published in a professional journal might be putting forward particular ideas from industry um, compared to sort of more of a, an academic text, one of the books you might find in the library, um, which is putting forward maybe more abstract ideas um, and thinking about how, how all of those could be relevant to you finding out more about your topic. Um, the next criteria, which is which is called technical skills, I think in this in this particular assignment is referring to something quite um, specific. And here we're looking to see that you're kind of referencing um, the kind of literature that you're looking at properly. Um, so for this, you need to be using the UCA um, kind of Harvard referencing system, um, and we'll we'll show we will see how that what that looks like in the examples um, that we we talk about. But I think here the importance of referencing is really, again, about showing where, where material, where this information, where the literature is coming from. So this is about acknowledging quotations that you might be making. But more than this, it's about where, where that information comes from. So even if things are in your own words, they still need to be kind of properly um, referenced. So you still need to be telling us each time where that information comes from. So this is again kind of communicating the fact that you're reviewing the literature, you're looking at what's out there and bringing it together. It shows us where information has come from and it also shows us kind of how, you know, where you're, where you're getting this information from and also shows us the way in which you're able to kind of put things together. So whilst it might just appear quite technical, oh, have you referenced properly, it, it's demonstrating a number of, of, of things as well about how you're understanding that and how you're putting it together. But it's very important to do as well, of course, in terms of acknowledging other people's work, because if you fail to do that, it, it can look as if you're passing off other people's work, other people's research as your own. So you need to be very careful when you're taking notes of material, when you're taking notes from the literature, that you're not copying and pasting anything and reading really clear about what material are other people's words and which material is your own words based on other people's things and which are genuinely your own um, opinion. And that's what referencing can help you articulate. So would you say that clear and coherent use of archival, electronic and biographical resources would be using the resources we looked at in the first workshop, like yep. the library catalogue, Google Absolutely. Scholar and the resources searcher? as they're the sorts of resources that will find these texts, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So that's exactly kind of what we're looking for when we're talking about, yeah, research skills as well. So hopefully this that underlines the importance of paying attention and, and kind of making use of those seminars and kind of research support sessions that are, um, that are scheduled for you because they really link really closely to what you're being assessed on. Yeah, so the, the fourth um, assessment criteria is about communication. So again, this is about how well are you communicating in the, t in the context of the literature review? How well are you kind of communicating the different um, positions or different views that you've been reviewing? How are you bringing that evidence together and how are you interpreting them? So here it perhaps might be worth sort of thinking about what the structure of your, of your work is. Are you introducing the reader to what you're going to be doing? Are you using subheadings to cluster um, different ideas or different points of view together um, and so this communication is both um, both how you're using language how you're how you're structuring your work how you're presenting that argument but it might also include like graphic material or visual material how is that communicating to the reader what's that relate are you what's that relationship between the image and the text do the images help help support your argument are those images bringing evidence that you can use as well so how you're communicating is both the structure of your work um, which is both kind of written and, and visual okay and then the fifth uh, the fifth element self-management might seem a bit abstract in this sense but I suppose what we're asking here is um, is how do you take the the kind of range of ideas and concepts that that you've been reading about in um, in professional and academic literature and then kind of articulate your own position in relation to that. And when you say articulate your own position in relation to that literature, could you expand on that? Yes, that, sorry, I can see that that could seem a bit abstract. So, for example, um, if you're reading about the, the kind of questions of uh, climate change um, and issues of sustainability, it's really interesting then to relate that back to your own work and your role as a designer. So it might be that you've been kind of 
looking at this for a long time, you're very aware of it and you've got strong feelings about how to kind of address sustainability in your work. And it would be really relevant to talk about that. Uh, it might also be that that's, um, it's an area that you're reading about, but it's quite new to you. And you're, it, it kind of leaves you with some questions about how uh, designers might be able to respond to that sustainability agenda. And that would also be, be equally kind of relevant to, to kind of articulate as a question. Thanks.